Hey everyone, Ken Surfs here, and it's Friday, time for another shave video. This one uh, I'm particularly interested in doing because I saw this gentleman, uh, Mr. Neil Breed, on Instagram, and what he was doing was creating a retro Ever Ready brush. And I saw some of these pictures he was posting of these prototypes he was working on. And uh, I reached out to him. I said, I got to get one of these to try. I go, because if you've watched my channels, you've seen that I've actually done some restorations of Ever Ready's. This one I, you know, really did a two-part video on. But uh, I've got a lot of restored Ever Ready brushes. But check out this. This is a retro a reproduction of the Ever Ready 200 brush. Just a perfect brush. And this one actually has, a, I believe, a silver tip badger on it. It just arrived the other day. Uh, and, you know, you, you really, you know, this is the original. That, the hassle that I have to go to in a restoration of one of these, if I would have known I could just buy these, uh, I, I would have. And he has... Well, check this out. He has a very wide selection of handles and knots you can uh, get. Check this out. Now, for some reason, I'm, I'm kind of partial to the green lately because uh, I didn't have a lot of green handles. And uh, I, like I said, I'm very, very happy to try this one out. I'm not sure where he gets his knots, but this is a really nice one. I can tell it's a uh, fresh badger, man, because uh, when I put this in water, you know, badger brushes often smell like a wet animal uh, when you first start using it. This one's got a faint smell of... Uh, of an uh, animal, but uh, I'm sure, just like all my other badger brushes, after a few uses, that smell goes away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the crystal skull to start soaking. Whoop. Man, I, I, <laughs> I'm gonna be buying a few more of these brushes for sure. I mean, I like the reds, the blue. Uh, I, I just I just had to try it out. So I figured I might as well do a vintage shave, a retro shave today. So I'm going to be using the uh, Old Spice shave mug today. And I haven't tried this soap before. Godridge, Goodridge, Godridge. Uh, but uh, it comes highly recommended. It's got a really nice smell to it. We're going to put this puck into the Old Spice Bowl. I brought out my vintage Shulton Old Spice aftershave to use in this uh, shave. So very, I, I enjoy using that. Uh, I've got my vintage Gillette Tech today with a silver blue. Somebody had asked, hey man, why don't you do another shave with a silver blue razor? You've been using a lot of the super thins and the Wilkinson Sword Gillette. Yeah, so, you know, uh, why not? We'll try something new. And if it cuts me, uh, I'll remember who asked me. <laughs> All right, so let us get this shave started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a little uh, hot water onto this puck, get that soap blooming a little bit. Got uh, Monty the dog over at uh, the groomers and someone's at the door. So I got to hold on and see who that is. Otherwise you'd have been hearing ton of noises. My son wondering where the dog was at the groomers. All right, let's see what we can do. All right, holds its water, that's for sure. Now, I've not used the soap before, so I'm curious to see how good it works. I'm starting to foam. I don't smell the, the badger yet. I smell the uh, shave soap. Let's see. I 
still remember uh, Leonard Yabara doing the what is it the, the lathering the speed lathering contest at the uh, Big Shave Southwest yeah soap is coming out of there the brush is whipping that up good but it's still a little thin for my taste I probably had too much water on that. And plus, first time I'm using this, uh, this soap. Got that barbershop smell. It's just spilling out of here, but I put too much damn water in it. getting there. Now we're getting there. It's called patience and I don't have that. My dad used to say that was my problem. There we go. I guess if you sat there for about a minute. So right off the bat. There we go. The brush is whipping up a good lather. And I don't smell the wet animal so much. Those of you who have a dog and you give it a bath, you'll know what I'm talking about. That hair stinks for a while. All right. Whew. All right. See, I shouldn't have tried out new soap with a new brush. But it's working very well. I love these vintage shaves. And I'm working on a, another James Bond tribute shave, Moonraker. And the reason being is this is the 1969, July 1969, was the Apollo 11 mission. 2009. Uh, it's the anniversary. I think it's the 50th anniversary of the uh, Apollo 11. And then in the summer, 10 years later, 1979, Moonraker was released. I don't know if that had any coincidence, but uh, I'm working on that. And I'm working on using a 1979 Gillette Black Beauty. I've said it before. Wet shaving is a hobby and an addiction. And the reason being is in the 60s and the 70s, you could go into any store and you could pick up any brush you wanted. You could pick up any razor. You know, they had so many choices of razors and blades. There we go. So many choices of razors and blades, but now you cannot. So you have to collect if you want to have choices. And that's my problem. If I could only go back in time, boy, I'd pick up some fat boys, some black beauties, save the box, a toggle, some brushes still in the packet. It'd be awesome. But since you can't do that, I collect brushes. And if your wives and girlfriends complain, there's a lot of other things you could be spending your money on. At least you're thinking of men's grooming, about keeping shaved, about, you know, presenting yourself. That's a good thing. Well, that blade worked pretty good. Okay, I missed a spot right here, but I'll get it. No cuts yet. Yeah, this is... All right, the knot on this brush... Look at that. Very nice. Dang. It's like whipped cream now. Very cool, Neil. You did pretty good. I've got all of his info in the description of this video. He just started out. But I believe he's up and running now. 
I hear from what I from talking to him that he's going to have 80 units in the first run. And then he's going to do a second run if once they sell. So you can check it out. Like I said, all the info. I didn't see a web page for him yet, but uh, I put all the info in the description of this video if you're interested in these just really cool retro brushes. All right. And I have uh, to look forward to gardening after this. I gotta mow the back lawn, my son's mowing the front lawn, planting, weeding, just had my trees trimmed. It's gonna be a fun day. It sounds like work, but man, a bad day at home is better than a good day at work, right? But it's not gonna be a bad day because I enjoy that stuff. I've been talking to my friend Burke and he has a one blade razor he's gonna send me to try out. So I'm really happy to try that out. I know a lot of you have asked my opinion on a one blade, but I have not used one yet. So that should be coming. And this brush I just picked up from the front porch today. Just delivered you. Man, I, I can't argue there. Excellent. Excellent. Now I'm gonna run this video a little bit longer because somebody asked, what do you do with a brush after you've done using it? So I'm gonna show you how I clean mine. Vintage. Pop the lid. Put some in. And after all these years, it still has a good burn. Man, there's nothing like that original Shulton scent. Soap in the ears. No, 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 not that I'm aware of. All right. So what I do is I shave with a little, uh, Oh, in the uh, sink. So now you got to get this out of there. So I run the water as I'm whipping this around into this bowl and it'll clear off all the soap. So I'm just letting the water run in here and spill out until it's clear. It's clear now. Then I give it a, a snap shake. Kind of like you're hitting a whip and she's gonna look like this and I bought these off eBay but you can get them anywhere I believe on the internet and it your brush just goes in hangs upside down and dries ready for next time if you leave that soap on there it you know I, it's probably not good I've done it before overnight and you know but then it dries kind of funny it can dry <laughs> Leaving a leaving that, you know. So, see, I'm gonna have to use this again and, and not do that next time. So that's how I clean my brushes when I'm finished. No blood. Perfect. All right, guys. Have a great day. Thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in those awesome retro brushes, check out Neil's site. And uh, I'm very happy, and I'm definitely gonna get a synthetic. I believe maybe with a red handle, because, uh, you know, you can never have too many brushes. It's an addictive hobby. And again, I do a video show for you guys, so I can't just use the one brush. I got to have some choices. All right, guys, until next time, it's Ken Searcy, have a great night. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your subscriptions. And oh, one last thing. 14 months ago, at one of my giveaways, I think it was the... Uh, I gave away a brush. I gave away all of this uh, th this item. The gentleman who won was in Bulgaria. 
I sent him the packaging information, the shipping information. 14 months later, two days ago, he received that package. That is just, well, I'm gonna say ridiculous. I bet you that box was sitting in customs in Bulgaria or on some shelf gone forgotten for all these time and then somebody found it and said, oops. So he texted me or emailed me yesterday going, after 14 months, I finally got the package and I shipped it two days after he won that contest. So uh, <laughs> uh, if you guys in my next giveaway, uh, just remember that if you're in a country that, you know, you know, maybe you're not going to get your mail delivered, you know, promptly, possibly have it sent to uh, maybe a friend who uh, maybe live in a different country or somewhere. But 14 months is ridiculous. But he got it. And he was very happy. He probably thought it was just lost in the mail and then it showed up. So, whew. all right. Thank you very much, guys. And we'll see you next time.